Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Air 75 from Beta FPV. And unlike the Air 65, the 75 only comes in one particular configuration as far as race or freestyle. Uh, we have two receiver types, Express LRS or TBS Crossfire. Flight controller is the new Air G473 uh, 4-in-1. You'll note there that it comes with the receiver uh, stacked on top uh, rather than part of the receiver. Originally, in my Air 65 review, I thought they were going to be using the new 4-in-1 uh, with everything built in on this one, but I was wrong. It comes with 0802 SE 23,000 kV motors. And on those motors are the Gem Fan 40 millimeter bi-bladed props. Camera is the CO3, which now ships with a piece of tape uh, on the back to fix that problem where you might see some of the PCB uh, shining through the lens. Flight controller does not have a USB port on it, but you do get this little dongle so you can connect it to USB-C, but you better make sure you keep track of this. Has the BT-20 connector that is from Beta FPV, and it is, a, I guess you'd call it a 190 degree angle. Uh, so you don't have to bend the wires, the connectors turn for you. As you can see here, no motor connectors, everything is soldered on. Really hard to see down in there, but that camera connector, that's smaller than we see on most of our nano cameras or micro cameras. So uh, something to be aware of that you might have to, if you want to change cameras, splice this in. This canopy is also made for this particular size of lens. The battery tray on the bottom does fit all these batteries, but I did find with the Weebleed 450s and the Tiny Whoop 450s, that they're a little bit tighter. They don't slide in quite as neatly. They take a little bit of finagling, but not bad at all. Unfortunately, these just arrived today, so we won't see any flight footage with them. The accessories you get are very, very minimal. We get the dongle connector that I already talked about. You can see my spare props are nice and green. We also get a beta FPV uh, support card, so you can scan that QR code and go to their knowledge base. And that's it. No stickers. It weighs just a touch over 21 grams. With the older style Beta FPV 450, it weighs 33 and three quarter grams. With the Weebleed FPV with the wire connector on it, weighs 32 and three quarter grams. Pretty much the same with the Tiny Whoop with the lead on it. And with the Beta FPV Lava 450, it weighs 33.45 grams. And motor post to motor post, I'm getting just about 77 millimeters. Of course, we're gonna start inside with the Air 75. I am using, as you see in the background, the uh, pyro drone version of the Radiomaster Zorro that has the AG01 gimbals. Uh, that is my daily driver to this day. I haven't found a radio I prefer over that one, uh, as well as the HD Zero goggles with the rapid fire immersion inside. And while I start off, you know, 19 seconds in or whatever it was with the crash, eh, you know, it happens. Not every flight is crash free. Uh, I would say I still crash probably 40 or 50 percent of the time. Uh, especially when I'm exploring my own skill set, whether that's uh, pushing or taking new paths or uh, trying something new when it comes to inside flight. We just have a smaller margin for error when we're flying inside. Uh, I should make it clear that I have a bias for micros. If you're not familiar with the channel, I pretty much only cover micro quads. Uh, that would be about three, three and a half inch props and smaller. Although my strongest bias is for whoops. I do like whoops. I think that they're very, very fun. I also have a house that is laid out well for flying around inside. It's one of my bedtime routines is to fly generally two flights before I go to bed. It's kind of how I wrap up the day. Um, some people play solitaire. Maybe some people have a drink or something like that. Or you have a show you finish your day with. I finish my day with a couple of whoop flights. Uh, the Air 75 does, does come with bi-blades. Uh, with the motors, you could definitely handle tri-blades if you prefer that. Uh, do know that you may want to change the tune. I thought with the Air 75 that the tune wasn't quite as good as the Air 65. Now, probably by this point, if you watch many YouTube videos on um, uh, FPV, you've probably heard a number of people talk about the Air 65. And it is very, very good. It's as far as I'm concerned right now, it is the best 
flying 65 millimeter. Part of that is weight. Uh, you know, you reduce weight, you increase your weight to thrust ratio, and part of that is also the tune. They seem to take uh, their good time with the tune. Uh, the Air 75, as I was starting to talk about, it's not quite as locked in as you might say, but uh, it does fly very well. I've had tunes that uh, I've worked on myself on my own whoops that I fly on the regular and have been for years that aren't as good as this, but uh, I just didn't think it felt as quite uh, locked in, as I said. I don't know, that's a generic term that might not mean a whole lot. Uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of 75 millimeters, specifically when you're flying inside. Of course, you can't hit as small a gaps if that's something that you like to do. And I have heard there's a few people out there that uh, they don't think my flight skills are quite there because I don't hit gaps. That's just not how I, I like to fly. I like to fly in you know, more of that pod racer sort of style or racing style. Uh, when I'm inside, doing tricks inside, I do them from time to time, but it's just not something I find I'm driven towards. Uh, I'm not trying to impress myself or my family or anyone who might be watching by pulling off a trick. Uh, I generally just like to fly around, and this is how I like to fly around, and I would encourage everyone who likes to fly to fly however you like. Emulate somebody if you want to, do tricks if you want to, race if you want to, hover around and explore if you want to, hit small gaps if you want to, whatever. It's just about having fun. It is a hobby for 99% of us. Uh, we're getting down to the end of the flight. Uh, for the most part, when it comes to 75 millimeter outside of it just being physically bigger and not being able to hit those smaller gaps, uh, it can be a little bit more challenging to control the thrust inside flight. Again, it's got a smaller margin for error and you have more thrust because you have larger props and larger motors in this particular case than a 65 millimeter. So that, that can be something you have to work on. Uh, flight has ended. Battery's in good shape above 3.58. Uh, 3 minutes and 38 seconds on a 450. Outside with a full sunny day, so you get to see that CO3 camera if you haven't before. Uh, there, my DVR does have a horizontal line that every once in a while works its way across that. That's something that started on some particular version of the firmware. I did upgrade my, upgrade my HD Zero goggles to the version that was just released here a week or so ago. Um, unfortunately, I still have that occasional horizontal line that goes across my DVR. So don't think that that is part of the quad. Uh, also note that the flight audio that you're hearing, that is not something that's native to the goggles or to the quad itself. So if you want flight audio in your footage, you'll need to do something like I am. Either use the HD Zero goggles and a microphone, uh, which I'm not doing, but I'm using a flight audio camera. I just think the audio, it's actually a cell phone. I just think the audio from the cell phone is better than any microphone I've found connected to the microphone on the HD Zero goggles. So that's why I continue to use uh, that particular setup. Outside, our flight time won't be quite as long. Of course, we're heavier on the throttle. We're doing longer runs. Uh, we're, we're just have more space so we can go faster in my particular case. I do a couple of different sort of uh, maneuvers, you might call them, to show it's a uh, somewhat uh, its freestyle capabilities, whether it's a, a power loop or a flip or a roll or a punch out, something like that. It's kind of the typical things that I do on this channel so that you can get a measurement. Uh, we've got the battery voltage uh, information across the bottom row, and then we've got our throttle and where I'm at on the throttle in the top left-hand side of the screen there. Uh, this particular quad, I also did some <laughs> Uh, I think it was the Air 65 video. Somebody was asking me to dive between the slats and the pergola. Um, I'll show you that footage in my crash reel because there was plenty of crashes as I was trying to dive through there. So I beat this one up. Uh, it might be important for you to know that I also do fly these things uh, more than a day, more than an afternoon, more than an hour. I don't fly them to just get flight footage. I, just, I fly um, just as a purpose of making sure that it's as reliable as it can over a course of about two weeks. Generally, that means five to eight or 10, possibly, depending upon weather flight sessions. Uh, sometimes it's even more. Sometimes I have time over my lunch break for work. Other times I fly after work when it's uh, weather, I still have sun after work or the kids' activities are a little bit low as well. So one of the things that I, I like about 75 millimeters is that they're more capable outside because they do have a little bit more weight, so they'll tolerate a little bit more wind. Plus they also have uh, more thrust produced uh, generally speaking, because a larger motor, larger, larger prop, uh, so you can combat wind. You also have a little bit more uh, speed that you can use outside or thrust that you can use for outside uh, flights uh, versus a 65 millimeters just kind of be the opposite of that. 
but again 75 millimeter is a little bit larger so it's not as friendly inside uh, so if you're trying to choose between a 65 and a 75 millimeter if you, depending upon the space that you're going to fly if you're primarily going to fly outside i would say a 75 millimeter would be the option i would direct you to if you're primarily going to be flying inside probably the 65 millimeter might be the right choice for you but of course uh, you can obviously fly a 75 millimeter inside and that was quite a graceful landing that graceful. I had there I'm gonna write the quad so we can see the OSD because it's kind of blown out with the Sun off the cement there there we go uh, so the battery is a touch slow uh, coming up to 3.41 and our flight time at 3 minutes and 20 seconds so up in this corner over here or over here whichever side I decide to put it on uh, I'm gonna show a brief crash reel from inside as well as most of the crashes from uh, when I was doing the uh, pergola dives uh, which isn't probably something I'll do a whole lot of um, yeah some of them came off just fine and I'm not particularly adept at it I think what one of my main problems with the pergola dive is when I would get the slats lined up, I wouldn't get to the throttle and nose up or pitch up quite fast enough, especially with the table and the chairs. I hit those things a lot of the times. I have a clip them. Uh, there are a few where I kind of, you know, dive through the slats and I just maybe graze the, uh, the cement as I fly off. I did find that if I go from the pool side and I kind of loop through that way through the pool side that I've got a little bit more clearance, a little bit room for air. Uh, but it was a fun uh, challenge and, and someone had mentioned that in I think the Air 65 video. So that, that got me some uh, time to uh, try that out and also beat this up pretty heavily. Uh, also, some of the crashes are probably from the speed runs. That's that little teaser part I put in the, the, the short burst of flight that I put at the very beginning of the video. I do that because it's fun for me to kind of push my own skills. And then it's also a good test for durability when it comes to inside flight you know smacking into furniture uh, when you're trying to go faster and you've got the camera angle cranked up uh, those are things that I think are, are pretty good for review purposes of of trying to test the durability because you know we're gonna crash these things so if we're not crashing are we reviewing um, because that's one aspect a big aspect durability reliability that we just don't get if we're not spending some time crashing I don't try to crash intentionally too often but uh, that's kind of part of the plan, especially when it comes to whoops. Okay, so uh, as that crash reel might still be playing, some damage to report. Uh, I broke the whoop here. Actually, I don't know at what point this part actually broke. It could have been during the pergola dives. I didn't notice it until the end of the pergola dives. The outside flight that you saw, I actually redid that because I didn't like my outside footage. I just didn't think I was doing the things I needed to do to show you how this flies. Uh, so actually that outside flight, came after all the pergola dives and all the damage um, and with this as well. Uh, that's really the only damage I have to report as far as the frame. The canopy and the camera did die on one of the pergola dives. The canopy was actually breaking apart uh, during the process of doing all those pergola dives and you might just call them pergola crashes. So uh, I broke it into three different pieces here and that's something that I've heard from others. I'm sure there are 3D prints available. So if you have a 3D printer or access to one where you could print a TPU canopy for this, depending upon what you choose, of course, it may weigh differently. Um, and you just need to make sure that it's for the, the CO3 camera. So to make sure you can secure it in there. 3D prints with TPU and, and other you know durable materials or flexible materials uh, might be the way to go if you're breaking a lot of these canopies. Uh, you can see some stress marks in here from all the flexing of all the crashes that I've done. Uh, you can see them back around here and then of course our breakage. So those, you can see where our breakage, we've also got kind of that stress mark on it here. Uh, the stress marks are indicators of that's where it's absorbing the impact and where it might potentially break. They're kind of at a cross-section member point. Uh, as far as batteries go, I haven't flown this. As I said, I, that just came in. I haven't even had a chance to charge it. Uh, I think this one came in at the, the heaviest. Um, that could be due to the glue and the, uh, the, the cap here on the end. I did fly these mostly. This is old and tired, so I don't necessarily want, really want to report the flight time on this, but uh, I did also fly it with the Lava 300s, which I don't even know if I have one out. Yeah, I did fly it inside only with the Lava 300, and I got about two minutes of flight time in my typical flight style, not cruising around. Uh, again, I haven't flown this one. These two, I got very, very similar flight times. Um, 
four minutes and 30 seconds uh, on the tiny whoop and the wee bleeds. On this one, I was only getting 330, and that was just kind of cruising around inside. That wasn't necessarily in my typical flight style. Uh, you saw my typical flight style, which was on one of these two batteries. I can't say for certain which one it was. So the, what was it, three minutes and 38 seconds or something like that? That's what I got on the, and I got um, three minutes and 30 seconds cruising on this particular one outside uh, without any punch outs on these 450s I, I got almost four minutes on a regular basis it, no no big moves when i say no punch outs pretty much flat flying but still at my regular sort of speed and doing all the turns i do so that's some flight time information about this and that's one of the benefits over 65 millimeter is we can run bigger props or, well excuse me we can run bigger batteries which give us more capacity and then we have more uh prop size so we produce more thrust and less uh, energy from the battery. So we get longer flight times, even though the weight is increased. The, the props and the powertrain is just more efficient. But uh, I understand anybody who has an affinity for a 65 millimeter just because they're nice. It is nice that they're now producing, at least in these cameras, the CO3s with a piece of tape on the back. Um, they use different tape. Like I had electrical tape and they had kind of, it's not fabric tape, but it's more like motor wire tape. That I talk about on the channel quite a bit. It's it's smooth. Uh, you'll note this one has electrical tape because this is not my original camera. I am looking for it here on my desk, and I unfortunately am not that organized. I'm not seeing the original. Oh, I think I just found it behind a box. Yeah. Okay. So this is the camera that they sent this with, and this was sent for review. And you can kind of see it's kind of that fabric tape on here that it's uh, it did the job. And the black electrical tape also does the job. So if you have the CO3, put the black electrical electrical tape on it, and you won't have that issue that uh, you may have seen in my Air 65 review, uh, because it now does have black electrical tape on it, but it didn't in the review. And you could actually, because light gets in, I think it's through the back and the holes, and then it kind of reflects or something. Basically, it would produce these aberrations in particular light scenes outside. I only saw it outside. Uh, to where you could kind of see the PCB in your FPV. They're resolving that now with a piece of tape. Uh, I did mention this connector. I don't know what this is called or what the name is. They have weird names oftentimes. JST-XT or what have you. Uh, it's a three-wire connector. They do use smaller wire that is that plastic-coated wire. So it's not as solder-friendly on here. But if you wanted to swap cameras, uh, do note that this connector is a different size than pretty much all the other cameras been using uh, i think this might be the same size as what newbie drone uses their camera if you do want to save weight nightwing over at tinywoop.com he did a air 65 saving weight tutorial i'll link that down in the video description if you wanted to see that uh, basically it's uh he, he i think it took like the video might only be 10 minutes but it probably took like 15 minutes to accomplish Shorten the motor wires, uh, use different screws non-metal screws they might have been pink they might have been ready i don't want to misspeak um, and they, they unbraided the wires to make them uh, shorter. Uh, and oh yeah. Um, and then instead of using the foam tape, which the receiver is used, uh, the foam tape is used to secure the receiver. They glued it down with uh, the tiny whoop E6000. And then they took the plastic off of the receiver, um, taking the plastic off and using some different foam tape might be a quick way to save a half gram. Um, but otherwise, you're looking at doing more work possibly to uh, take the weight on down. And you can do those both things. To either one of these doesn't matter. Uh, again, this one comes with uh, receiver options of Express LRS, what I've been using for years, and TBS Crossfire. There is no FR Sky, there is no DSMX or Spectrum stuff. This is just Express LRS and Crossfire on both of these. And one of the more remarkable things about these quads is the price. $94.99. And if you're asking me, these are the whoops to get right now. Beta FPV is kind of taking that trophy. They've taken that lead. Um, they actually it seemingly took more time to come about with these. They designed a new board and kind of had some different thoughts about how to save weight and how to produce the performance. I will say, though, that happy model motors tend to be more efficient than beta FPV motors. So if you're a builder, that might be something you want to consider is going with happy model motors, especially for flight time, something like that. Um, there has been some discussion. I think Chris Rosser had a video about the VTX output. I think it's too high is what I'm hearing. Unfortunately, I didn't, haven't watched Chris's video yet. 
Um, so if you go to race events, 25 milliwatt might be higher than 25 milliwatt. Uh, I'll find Chris's video and I'll link it down in the video description. There's going to be all sorts of links as all the things I've mentioned through this video down in the video description. I'll try to make it clear which is which uh, so that you can sort you can find the information that you're looking for that I've referenced in this video. Uh, but that's important to note for those people that might go to race events because if you're blasting out you know, 100 milliwatts or what have you, and it's supposed to be 25 milliwatts, it can cause problems for other racers. And, and no one wants to be that sort of problem. So um, for most of us who are just kind of solo flyers, casual flyers, hobbyists, that might not be an issue, but um, it's something that you want to at least investigate by watching Chris Rosser's video. I think it came on the Air 65, but it's using the same board, so it'll be the same. As I said, if I think if you're looking for a whoop, whether it's 75 millimeter or 65 millimeter analog, that is, these are the two that you want to look at. And uh, I think you want to buy one of them if you're looking to purchase a whoop right now. Uh, if you're looking to replace a whoop um, and you have the funds and you want to buy another whoop, I would look at these as well. I just think they fly very, very well. I think the PID tune on the 65 is very good. The 75 is pretty good. It's just not quite as good. And I think in one of those moves, I kind of did a... I kind of did a jump turn through the Y in that tree and you could see the prop wash come out. That's specifically what I saw was a little bit of prop wash on, yeah, you might call them dirty moves or bad moves or, or poor paths. Um, and yeah, you can fly around those things, but it's something that I noticed that I just didn't experience with the 65. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.